Scrinto has been working on a new experience that they call the Playground for the Mind. And they have been developing that as a top secret for a few months, but a few users had the opportunity to test and give feedback on this new experience. I was happy to be one of them, and in this video I want to share a sneak peek of everything that is coming up in the launch in a couple of weeks. So let's check it out. New board elements, stacks, embedded documents, visual connectors, templates, and a new user interface. Those are some of the things that you find in the new playground for the mind. So let's go one by one to see what is new in there. New board elements. In the current version of screen to the card, or what we now call the document, is the main element in Scrinto, where you create all your content from top to bottom. You can add images, you can add videos, but everything is always in a linear structure. Now, in the new version, Scrinto sees the board as the main content editor, or as they are calling it, an edgeless content editor. So PDFs, images, web links, social media embeddings, videos, and of course, text. Everything you could add into a card before, now you can add directly in the board. So everything that you add now inside of Scrinto is a block, either inside of a document or inside of a board. And that means you can move a block from a document to the board, from a board to the document, or from one document to another. Stacks. So the boards are really good for us to make sense of information in this two-dimensional space, even create content and organize content in there. But as soon as you finish it making sense, and now we want to create some coherence or even communicate the knowledge to others, we may want to linearize our thoughts. So you want to move from that 2D space of the board into something more like a document, top to bottom. And that's when stacks enter in the story. When you move blocks close together, you can make them part of the same group, the same stack. So rather than moving the blocks alone, you can move them all together. You can add them to a stack or you can remove them from a stack. And if you stop to think, what is a document if it's not just a stack of content blocks? And that's why now you can take a stack and convert it into a document. So that document will exist outside of the board as well. So you can work on the content of the document separately or have the same document in multiple boards. Embedded documents. Scrinto has already released this functionality where you can embed one document inside of another document. But I believe it only reaches its full potential when you think about Scrinto as a playground for the mind. So, as I said before, sometimes after making sense of the information, we want to create lines of thinking so we can communicate that to others as reports, as articles, as books, or whatever it may be. So you slowly making sense of the information in this two-dimensional space, you start to linearize to create some coherence on that, and then create multiple documents with pieces of that information. But then now, how can I compose a big document, let's say a book or an article that's very long, just with all those small pieces, and that's where embedded documents enter. With embeds, the pieces can exist independently of each other or compose a bigger document. So you can open the report as if it was a single thing and read all its parts, or you can open each part separately and work on them individually. I find that pretty cool and it's very good for reports logs or output notes. Visual connectors. In this new version, you can also add visual connectors. And these are just arrows and lines that you can have on the board. These are not logical links between the elements as we used to have in the previous version. They are literally just drawings that exist on that board. So you can make sense of information that is just specific for what you're seeing right now, rather than persisting outside of the board. And these are very useful if you want to draw temporary connections, visual hierarchies, or really if you just want to point at something. 
But if you also take them as drawing tools, you can create something else. You can have meaningful visual dashboards, like using an Eisenhower matrix for your project, or drawing some sort of Kanban, for example. Template. If you go to the very end of the new toolbar, you'll find an interesting button there. And those are the templates. Screento has provided a set of templates for both documents and for boards themselves. And templates are very good if you are always creating the same type of documents over and over again, like meeting notes, for example, or a daily journaling session. At the moment, we only have access to a set of templates provided by the Screento team, but they already said their plan is to have a library of templates where we users can also contribute our own templates to the community. And I'm really looking forward to that. New user interface. In the last weeks, the Screento team has also done a full revamp of the user interface. And that means new icons, new columns, the right sidebar disappeared, and some of the menus move inside of the components, either the board or a document. And it seems there is more coming up soon. I don't have much information about that, but the team already said that there is something coming for the what used to call the spotlight search and now is the library search. So I'm really looking forward to see what's coming up there. So this was a quick sneak peek on what's coming up for the Screento's playground for the mind. But that's not all. The team is still working on porting all the functionality from the previous board into this new board. And to me, as I said in my video why I moved from Obsidian to Screento, that means visualizing the logical links automatically and organizing those links automatically as well. So I'm really looking forward to that. So let's see what the next days will bring. So while we wait for these new cool features to be launched, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or if you'd like me to record a video about something. Anything related to PKM, sense making or research as well. And I see you in the next video.